So let's have a review class of the basic concepts in physical pharmacy. So first things first, let's talk about the fundamental and derived dimensions. Pag sinabi natin kasi fundamental, tatulong naman yan eh, length, um, mass, and then your time. Okay, then of course, yung mga derived dimensions natin, yun yung mga ginagamit yung fundamentals to get their values, like area, uh, pressure, force, yun yung mga derived, derived dimensions natin. Okay, pero normally class, whenever we're talking about these dimensions, we always have a reference standard. Kumbaga may basihan tayo sa kanila. So a reference standard class is simply a fundamental unit relating each measurable quantity to some natural or artificial constant in the universe. Okay? So here are some of the dimensions class that we usually talk about. So class for fundamental dimensions, ito yung length, mass, and time. When we say fundamental class, hindi ito nagbabago. Okay, kumbaga, this is a constant for each thing. Siguro mga constant ang length ng cellphone natin. Okay? Isa lang naman siguro ang length niyan. Isa lang din naman siguro ang mass nito. Okay? And in, in terms of time, time flows constantly. Okay? And we exp hindi, nababago ba natin ng oras? Hindi natin nababagong oras. Okay? Although, sabi nila, time is relative daw, according to Einstein. Okay? Kaya nga sabi nila, di ba, it's possible daw to go back in time, go into future, blah, blah, blah. Time travel, yes. It's relative daw. Okay? Pero sabi natin, class, it's still a fundamental dimension. Something that we cannot change. Okay? And then of course, let's derive, meaning gumamit tayo ng different fundamental dimensions to get their values like area, volume, density, velocity, acceleration, force, pressure, energy. Okay, and so on and so forth. If you notice class, lahat to, nag-aral nyo sa physics. Now, sabi ko kakalina class, it's um, sa ating ano, there are three fundamental dimensions, so length, mass, and time. So each of these units is assigned as a definite unit and a reference standard. So class, may, may standard tayo for length, mass, and time. Okay? Which I'll be showing to you in a while. Now there are two systems of measurements class na ginagamit natin usually. We have the metric system. Okay? And then we have the SI units. Normally class in physical pharmacy, gumagamit tayo ng metric system. So pag sinabi ng metric system, ang ating fundamental units or fundamental dimensions class will be covering... Uh, length, length, mass, and um, time. So, ang unit na ginagamit natin is centimeters. Oh, sorry. For weight, it's gram. And then for time, it's seconds. Okay? That's why class, we call it the CGS system. So, centimeter, grams, and seconds. Right? Kaya tawag sa kanya CGS system. Yung metric system, tawag natin sa kanya is CGS system. Alright? Now, what about for SI? Okay, SI naman class would be another form of, um, of measurement. Okay, we're in class, this one is considered to be an international. Kung baga, kahit saan ka pumunta sa mundo, alam nila ang SI system. So normally class, ang units na ginagamit natin dito would be meters for length, kilogram for mass, and still seconds for time. Okay. Length. Mass, time. Kompletohin ko na pala. Okay? So, yun na naman kasang difference. Right? Pero, if you remember, uh, ang CGS system natin, convertible pa rin naman yan to these guys. Meter, kilograms. Right? Right? So, these are the reference standards class often used for our fundamental dimensions. Okay? So, for length class, sabi nga natin, a reference standard yan would still be meter. Okay? Now, alam niyo ba class, ang mga reference standards nito, may, 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 ano, tawag, tawag, may, may, uh, Parang museum. Okay, we're in class. Nakalagay doon lahat ng reference standards ng lahat ng measurements natin. Okay, let's say for example, a kilogram, may specific, ano doon class, may weight na ano, yun talaga yung pinaka-standard ng kilograms. Okay? So, for uh, seconds class would be, of course, based on the atomic frequency of cesium-133. Okay, yung atomic frequency niya class is equivalent to one second kasi. Okay? So yun, kumbaga naka-base yan sa radioisotope na cesium-133. Ang ating seconds. Kumbaga yung 1, 2, 3. Ganyan, ganyan. Naka-base yan sa frequency ng isang isotope. Ang radioisotope. Okay? Now, for length class, okay, so it's simply the measurement of the distance and the reference standard is always meters. Sabi natin to. And the unit of length class for the um, CGS system would of course be centimeters, for SI, that would be meters. Alright? Now, do I really need to know this? Well, the, well, oh, 
Okay? Kasi depende kung anong system ang gagamitin natin. Some, some, uh, tawag ito. Sa manufacturing firms class, prefer to use the SI. Okay? So anything na kukumpute nila in terms of weight is always in kilograms. Pero most of the time, class, we still use CGS. Laging in grams pa rin. Right? And for area naman, class, it's the squared of a length and has a unit of square centimeter or centimeter squared. Okay, so usually, class, when we get an area, we get the length and width. Okay? So kung ito, class, ang box natin, I, or paper, say, for example, paper, to get the area, I need my length, and then I need my width. Now, normally, ang units niyan would be, dapat pareho, syempre. So kung centimeter, centimeter yan, as sabi natin, area is equal to length times width. So dahil centimeters times centimeter yan, Ang lalabas na unit would be centimeter, oops, centimeter squared. Okay? Kung meters yan, they obviously meter squared. Right? So that's the area. Now, of course, class, if you want to get the volume, that's length times width times. Tanayan natin kung solid yung ano mo, kung solid yung kukunan mo ng volume. Right? Kung halimbawa, ito, ito yung box. Yan, ginawa ko 3D. How do I get the volume of this box? So obviously, that's going to be length times width times height. Very good. Yes. Yun. Ah, thank you very much, Mr. Ano, Mr. Alpha Far Shan and Althea. Okay. That's height. So therefore, this is volume huh, of a solid. Length times width times height. Okay. Open times class, kung lahat to ay centimeter, Ano ang unit ng volume? Centimeter cube. Very good. It's always cubic centimeter. Or centimeter cube. Yeah, very good. Okay, Miss Kyla. So it's centimeter cube. Right? Or di kaya class, another term na ginagamit natin ito is CC. Saan yung madalas narinig yung term na CC? Centimeter cube. Sa syringe po. Yes, yeah, sa syringe. And guess what class? One CC is equivalent, is equivalent to? One? 1 ml. Yes, 1 ml. Because class ml is a unit of volume. Right? So, I guess class familiar na naman to Tera, giga, mega, kilo, okay, and so on and so forth. Like milligrams, milliliters, okay, millimeters, mga gana. Okay? Yeah. Micro class, of course, it can be said as MC. Okay, kaya nga meron tayong micrograms. Right? Basta class, nandaan nyo, pag micro yun, 10 to the negative 6. A millionth. Okay, so kung micrograms, it's a millionth of a gram. So, uh, kung ilan yung grams mo, lagyan mo ng limang zero sa unahan. Tapos zero point, tapos, oh yun, limang zero. So, so, so. Okay? Okay. So, at least yun, alam nyo na. Okay, so as I've said a while ago, class, volume. Okay, we can either measure this using length, width, and height. Or class, we can usually measure this as a displacement of the amount of water. Okay, how much of water is displaced after give after ano, inducing or nilalagay mo doon yung tawag dito. Uh, yung substance na gusto mo i-measure yung volume. Okay, let's say for example, you want to measure the volume of a rock. Okay, so kuha ka ng graduated cylinder, so usually class ang ginagamit nito is graduated cylinder. Ito ang graduated cylinder ko. Good. Pupunuin ko siya ng tubig kunwari 5 ml nung pinuno ko. Ah, nilagyan mo siya ng tubig. Hinulugan ko siya ng isang bato. Kumari, hindi ko alam ang weight. Gusto ko malaman ang volume niya. Tapos obviously class, yung 5 ml na yan, tataas yan. Kasi nilagyan ko ng bato eh. Okay, so andito na si bato. Ang taba naman ng graduated cylinder na to. Right? So anyway, um, so class, obviously, madidisplace yan. So kunwari, naging uh, 7 ml siya. So class, ilan ang volume ng bato ko? Okay, very good. So that would just simply be, Sabihin ko, ang volume ng rock equivalent to 2 ml. How did I get that? Okay, I simply measured class the total level of displacement. How much of the water was displaced? Okay? Now class, water ang gamit natin madalas dito. Ha? Ito na. Asa na ba yun? Uh, volume of a kilogram of water at 1 atmospheric pressure. So up in this class, ang ginagamit natin dito is water. 1 atmosphere, huwag kayong mag-ala. Yan yung normal atmospheric pressure natin. Ito, Humihinga tayo ngayon, this is a pressure of one atmosphere. Right? 
yung pressure na meron tayo ngayon sa ating surroundings. Right? And take note class, ha, here's something that you have to remember. Although hindi naman natin ito ginagawa, pero ang laging dapat class, ang temperature ng water natin is at 4 degrees Celsius. At 4 degrees Celsius class, the density of water is equal to 1 milligram per ml. Oh, sorry, gram per ml plato. Sorry, gram per ml yun na gram per ml. Hmm. Kasi ang density natin is mass over volume. Right? It's 1 gram per ml at 4 degrees Celsius. Normally, class beyond this temperature or below this temperature, hindi na 1 gram yun. Nagiging 0.9 something na yan. 0.9, 999999 ganyan. Pero technically kasi pag ni-round off po 1 pa rin, so ang tendency class is we just assume, na-assume na lang natin na, and eh, 1 na lang, yun na yun. Round off na lang natin. Okay, pero again class, the standard temperature will always be 4 degrees Celsius. Alright? Okay, so yun, ang reference standard natin for volume is still cubic centimeter. Okay, or we call this CC. And the unit of measurement will always be, for volume would still be ML. Okay, normally class, we use volume as a unit of measurement for liquids. Okay? Definitely for liquids to. Although we can use this naman for solids, pero pag solid class, usually cubic centimeter. Okay, pero assumption din naman kasi natin eh. 1 cc is equal to 1 ml. This one's for liquids. This one's for solids. Alright. Now class, what about mass? So mass is often expressed as the weight of the body. Okay, normally class, ang ginagamit natin dyan will be a balance. Pwede naman regular lang makiluhan. Wala naman problema. Okay? Pero class, just so you know ha, mass is different from weight. Can anyone tell me what's the difference between mass and weight? Um, na, based po sa napag-aralan po namin sa P6 po nung senior high, when we say mass po, it has magnitude but with no direction. Pwede. That is why it is um a scalar quantity. Mm -hmm. And um, and yung weight naman, ay, tama, yung weight, weight naman po, it has both magnitude and vector. That is why it is vector quantity po. Okay, very good. So class, tama yun. So kung baka ang mass is simply the total amount of matter in a, Oh yeah, total amount of atoms or matter class in a in a substance, right? Halimbawa, ito, how many molecules do I have there? Right? How much matter do I have in this calculator? Okay, so yun yung mass niya. Pero once class we start, kaya nga, sabi, sabi nga niya, no, tama, si Miss, um, si Miss Faith, um, wala siyang direction. Okay? Wala siyang direction. So ibig sabihin, hindi siya affected ng gravity. Right? Tama yun. Okay? Now class weight on the other hand, it has direction, meaning ang direction niya is going down. Right? Because it's affected by gravity. So that's why class oftentimes when we are computing for weight, we are actually considering there the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? I think that's something na familiar na rin naman kayo, right? Alright. So kumbaga class, weight is mass considering gravitational pull. Right? Mass kasi generally is just total amount of matter. Or, or atoms, pwede na rin yun, okay, of a substance. Okay, boom? Okay. So, reference standard dating class, again, for mass would be kilograms. That's for the SI unit. Okay, pero most of the time, sa CGS unit natin, gamit natin is grams. So, sabi nga natin, mass is different from weight because weight is simply mass times gravity. Okay? Ang weight kasi, consider dito ang, yun nga, ang acceleration due to gravity. Okay, next one. Ito, alam ko, sawang-sawa na kayo. Density. Tama nga ba? Okay. So, density class is defined as a mass per unit volume at a fixed temperature and pressure. Gumamit din ba kayo ng triangle-triangle dito? Ang habit sura nun. Yung parang ganito. Uh, wait lang, ha? Ano nga ba ito? Density equals mass over volume. Did you guys use this? Yes, po, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Go good. So I guess familiar na naman sa inyo ito, no? So sabi natin, di ba, density equals mass over volume. If you want to get mass, that's density times volume. If you want to get volume, that's mass over density. Okay? Pero ako, plus personally, I still prefer writing it like this. Mas mag na lang ako, transpose. Alright. So class, density is simply, yun na nga, mass over volume. CGS class, usually ang units na dyan would be grams per cubic centimeter. Okay? While for SI, 
Okay? That's usually be, that, that would usually be in kilograms per meter cube. Pero itong CGS nating class, pwede rin naman kasi itong gram per ml. Okay, wala nga problema doon. Kasi sabi natin, 1 cc is equivalent to um, 1 ml. Alright? Okay, what about specific gravity class? For specific gravity, okay, remember that it's a pure number without dimension. So, ibig sabihin class, walang unit si specific gravity. It's simply the ratio of density of a substance to the density of water. Okay? The volume being determined at the same temperature. Now, class, ang sabi natin dito, the density of water will always be 1 gram per ml. Right? Kung baga yun yung general assumption natin. Kaya, class, pag nagpa-compute ng specific gravity, oftentimes kung ano ang density ng substance mo, yun na lang kayo specific gravity. Okay? Because ang mangyari lang dyan, class, we'll just be dividing it by 1. Just the specific gravity of water. Pero again, class, ha, 1 gram per ml, it should be at 4 degrees Celsius. Kaya yung pinaka-caveat dito. Pero again, generally, class, in practice, kahit di 4 degrees Celsius, ano assumption natin lagi? Sa density ng tubig, it's always 1. So as you all know, uh, specific gravity is also known as the ratio of the mass of a substance to the mass of an equal volume of water at 4 degrees Celsius or at some specified temperature. But again, class, most of the time, we still use the 4 degrees Celsius. Because again, at this temperature, density of water is equal to 1 gram per ml. And we all know, class, that specific gravity is just simply the density of your substance over the density of water. If you have any substance, mo na yun, E, lagi naman density nito is 1 gram per ml. X gram per ml. So, tendency class cancel out to. E, oftentimes, whatever your density is, yun na rin ang specific gravity mo. Okay? So, here are some derived dimensions and units. So, like area. So, sabi nga natin, this is length squared. Oftentimes, just simply length, or, um, length, length squared. Okay? Uh, for volume naman, length cube. Kasi, consider nito ang length times width times height. Okay, ito usually length times width lang naman ito eh. So density would be cubic meter, uh, cubic ml. Or sorry, ml, cubic centimeter. So this the uh, sorry, density could be either um, mass times length. Right? So velocity and acceleration, so on and so forth. Now, let's talk about class force. Okay, ito meron sa force natin. So it's a push or pull. Okay? Um, it's required to... Uh, set the body in motion, right? So whatever that body may be. So the principle here is the larger the mass of the body and the greater the required acceleration, the greater the force of that of that one must exert. So basically, class, ang sabi nga natin, di ba, force is directly proportional to mass and acceleration. So therefore, class, if you increase mass, you can, of course, increase force as well. And then if you increase acceleration, tataas din si force. So it's directly proportional. So this proportionality class is converted to an equality that is to an equation or mathematical expression involving an equal sign. So according to the laws of algebra, we write it as simply class force equals mass times acceleration. So whatever this acceleration may be, yun yung gagamitin nating, um, yun yung gagamitin nating value here. Now, class, normally when we compute for force, any unit of mass times any unit of acceleration. But normally, class, if we're using the SI units, this would, of course, be in kilograms times meter per second squared. Okay? So, with kilograms ang ating mass, then meters per second squared ang unit na ginagamit natin for acceleration. Okay, I think there's something you know naman, na. So, let's proceed. So, in CGS system class, okay, Ang usual naman na unit for force would be dynes, would be dynes, okay? While on the other hand, sa SI units natin, it would be in newtons, right? Where in ang kanyang unit would be kilogram meter per second squared. Pero for the CGS system, it's usually dyne. Sa dyne naman class, it's simply the force that imparts to a mass of 1 gram of an acceleration. Ang unit niya class would be 1 centimeter. Ng acceleration natin would be in centimeter per second squared. Well, on the other hand, yung mass natin will always be in grams. Kaya nga siya tinawag na CGS. So, centimeters 
grams, and then yung S natin would be seconds. Okay, so SI, sabi nga natin, di ba, ang unit for mass would be in kilograms. Okay, then unit for length would be in meters instead of centimeters. Okay. Now, relationship between the weight and mass by substitution of force with weight and acceleration with gravity, the equation becomes, okay, sabi nga natin, weight would be equal to mass times acceleration. But we have to quantify this. This is due to gravity. And we all know, class, that the acceleration due to gravity will always be in, will always be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. All right? Want to convert this into centimeter per second squared? So we do dimensional analysis. 9.8 meters per second squared. Actually, times 100 lang naman to. Times 100 centimeter over 1 meter. That's what I'll meter. This becomes 980 centimeters per second squared. Okay? Yan. Alright. Tapos ang mass natin dito, class, could be any unit of mass. So kung CGS yan, this should be in grams. Right? Pero if this one is in SI, this would usually be in kilograms. Okay? What about for pressure? Okay? So pressure naman, class, is defined as the force per unit area. So meaning, class, when we talk about pressure, a pressure class, if this is the area, how much pressure am I putting here? Right? In a specific area. So usually class, it's defined as the force per unit area. So how much force are you exerting in a specific area? So oftentimes class, ang, ang unit natin for pressure would be uh, force over uh, area. So generally, pressure is equal to force over area. Area. Now, looking at this equation class or this formula, ano ang pwede nating masabi sa kanila? That pressure is directly proportional to force, meaning as I increase pressure, tumataas ang force and vice versa. Or taasan ko ang force, tataas din ang pressure. Pero class, looking at this formula, anong masasabi ko tungkol sa area with relation to pressure? What can I say about its relationship? Single, complicated, pwede ba yun? Siyempre, hindi. Yes, Miss Ano. Angelica. Um, pressure is inversely proportional to area po. Okay, very good. Now, class, sandaan nyo ito lagi, ah. Pag nakita kayo ng formula, class, itong gusto ko laging maiis maisip ng mga studyante. Pag titignan nyo kasi ang formula, gawin siyang parang fraction para alam nyo yung relationship ng bawat variables. So that you'll understand the relationship of, of each variable. Normally, class, kung, ka kung kahilera siya ng numerator, ibig sabihin ng class, they are directly proportional. Pero pag ang variable na tinitingnan natin is part of the denominator, ibig sabihin, yung sa other side ng equation na to, it's inversely proportional. So meaning class, if I want to increase pressure, I need to decrease the area. Okay, I need to decrease the area where my, tawag ito, um, kung nasan yung, ano ko, yung, kung saan ako nag-exert ng force. Okay, kaya tingnan nyo class, nakakita na ba kayo ng karayom sing laki ng lapis? Karayom, asin yung needle? Nakita na ba kayo ng karayom na sing laki ng lapis? Wala. Because class, kung kasing laki ng lapis ang karayom natin, halimbawa pang injection, you'll need a lot of force to puncture the skin. Okay? Unlike class, kung maliit lang ang karayom, di ba ang liit ng area nun? So very lit, minimal ang area, so it can provide high pressure using minimal force. Nag-gets ba class? Kaya nga pag nagtutusok tayo, di ba ng syringe, gaya lang, oh, tsuk, tapos na. Kasi maliit lang yung area na tutusukan niya. Okay? So, yun. So, that's how area and pressure and force um, relates to each other. Yes, very good. It's yun. It's uh, inversely proportional. Okay? Okay. Now, class, another formula for pressure, right, would be dyne per centimeter squared. Okay? So, meaning force in dynes divided by the cubic centimeter or the area where that force is being directed to. Okay? Another formula for that, so normally class, yun lang naman yun, dynes over centimeter squared. Pero another formula for that class na ang makukuha mong end product is still dyne per centimeter squared is with the use of density, okay, acceleration due to gravity, and height. 
height in centimeters of the column of liquid. Now, class, you've seen BP apparatus, right? Nakita kayo ng BP apparatus, right? Ano yung mga barometer? Familiar ba sa inyo yung term na barometer? Okay, so these are devices used, class, to measure atmospheric pressure. Okay, or pressure in general. Now, class, normally, nilalagyan natin yun ng liquid. Right? Whatever liquid that may be. In the case of a spigmomanometer, okay, we use mercury as the liquid. So, class, kung nakita na kayo ng barometer or spigmomanometer na gamit niya ay mercury. Oops. Kumari straight yan. Right? Makikita nyo, class, ito yung mercury. Okay? Tapos, may di ba may mga graduations dito? Right? Tapos, ang units lagi ito, class, would be millimeter of mercury or MMHG. So normally class the height of that or whatever liquid na yon okay nagagamitin mo would be important. At the same time yung density ng liquid na ginamit natin. Okay? Now class if we're using mercury then of course I'll be needing the um the density of mercury. Pero most of the time class we can use other fluids din naman. Okay, Pascal class is another unit for pressure. Okay? And again class it's almost similar this one is an most on as mostly SI unit. Okay, so metric na sa ating SI. Okay, we're in class, ang gamit natin is Newton per meter squared. Now, for this one class, CGS naman si Dines natin. Dines per centimeter squared. Now, class, ang Pascal is simply Newtons divided by the area. Or Newton meter, um, area squared. Or meter squared. Now, class, these, these are some of the conversion factors that we need to be aware of. Normally, class, ang, ang Pascal kasi it's very small. It measures very small amounts of pressure. Okay? Kaya nga class, ang 1 atmosphere is actually equivalent to 101,325 pascals. Ito yung conversion factor niya. Or 1 bar. Familiar ba kayo sa bar? Na unit? Again, class, it's just another unit for um, tawag dito? Pressure. Usually atmospheric atmospheric pressure. So 1 bar class would be equal to 100,000 pascals. Okay? And 1 dyne per cubic centimeter is equivalent to 0.1 Pascals. Okay, so ito yung conversion factors na ginagamit natin kadalasan. Okay, now anyway, work in energy. So sabi nga natin, energy is a condition of the body that gives the capacity for doing work. Okay, energy can be kinetic or potential. Then as for heat, right, it's, it could be a thermal equivalent of energy. And simply in work is a mechanical equivalent of your energy. Now often, more often than not, class, ang concern natin dito sa, ano, sa physical pharmacy would be more on heat. Okay, specifically more on thermodynamics. Right, how does heat affect the matter or the um, the substance that we're using, right? And now, class, for the unit of work and energy, in CGS class, we usually have the ergs, erg. Okay, we're in erg class is simply defined as the work done when a force of one dyne, okay, acts through a distance of one centimeter. So basically, class, an erg, okay, would be simply um, yung dynes, yung force, multiplied to distance traveled. Okay, so now open that not class, uh, and that distance should be in centimeters. And open that class, erg is too small, so it's usually replaced by joules. Okay, masyadong malit kasi mo kwa mong yut na masyadong malit ang ergs, so we usually replace it with joules. And joules naman class, ang computation lang yan is simply newton times, sorry, ang force mo in newtons times in distance traveled in meters. Okay, now for temperature class, unit for temperature would always be in degrees. Uh, degree Celsius, Kelvin, or Fahrenheit. Now, I think familiar na rin naman kayo sa mga dito, um, formula natin when we compute for temperature, right? Tama nga ba? Degree Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, yes. Right, I think so. Yon. Okay. So, hindi ko na masyadong didiscuss to, ha? Pero you do know, class, that if you want to get Kelvins, that's uh, degree Celsius plus 273 lang naman. And then we have units for Fahrenheit and uh, units for degree Celsius. Now, these are just some review topics class regarding ratio and proportion, okay, and then your dimensional analysis. So this is something that I think familiar na rin naman kayo. Okay, so just take note that ratio and proportions are frequently used in physical sciences for converting one system to another. Or let's say, for example, if one calorie equals, so one cal is equal to 4.18 joules, then how many calories would there be in 3 joules? Okay, then x equals something yan. Right, just to be sure. Aha. 3 divided by 
ang lalabas would be 0 point yun, 7177 calories. So, very good. Right. Now, exponents, sabi nga natin, di ba, some of our units can, or some of, some of our values here would usually be um, expressed as, as, as exponents. Okay, so the powers to which a number is raised. So the concept of exponents is usually based on algebra. Okay? And as to logarithms class, I think familiar na rin naman kayo gumamit ng log, right? Usually ginagamit ito class when we start to compute for pH. So it's the equality, the equality is expressed in the formula log 10 is equivalent to 1000 equals 3. So we're in the 1000 is an anti-logarithm of 3, okay? As long as the base of the logarithm is 10. Uh, okay, mag class? Basta andyan yung log sa calculator natin, madali lang to. Okay? And usually, class, yung log naman na ito, ginagamit na ito when we compete for pH or pKa. Same goes with anti-log. When you go, class, to oh, dito, uh, pharmacokinetics, okay, sa pharmacokinetics naman natin, class, ang ginagamit natin is anti-log naman. Okay? Sorry, not anti-log. Natural logarithm. Okay? Well, that's something that we usually use to express concentrations of drug inside our body. We'll talk more about that when you reach pharmacokinetics na. Pero as of now, uh, logarithm class is one of the mathematical um, expressions na gagamitin natin whenever we do computations, especially for pH.